Probably from the age of 10, I think I decided I wanted to do art for a living, but I wasn't quite sure yet whether it would be comics or not. And I really didn't determine until college, after college that I wanted to get into comics particularly. My first uh, comic book for a major company, which was DC Comics, was a book called Hawk and Dove, which I started with issue number one and it lasted for about four years. Uh, and then right after I left Hawk and Dove, I went on to working on Batman, which I was on for about five years. And since then, I've worked on most every major character for the two largest publishers in the country. Currently, I'm working on Amazing Spider-Man, which is the, the main Spider-Man title. And uh, at the moment, I'm supremely happy on that book because it's got an excellent writer, an excellent penciler. We've got an excellent colorist on it. So the entire team, everybody's just like, it clicks, it works together beautifully. And so I'm really happy with the finished product when it comes out that everything works just right. Most mainstream comics that are published monthly are a team effort. So you have a writer or sometimes multiple writers. Then you have a penciler who does the initial storytelling in, in literally with a pencil drawing on a piece of paper. He determines the panels and he does the bulk of the actual draftsmanship. One of the reasons I chose to become an inker is because I really loved the, like the last turn of the century, like the late 1800s and early 1900s. There was some, a lot of phenomenal artwork done in pen and ink. And outside of comics, this medium is not very much used anymore. So I, in a lot of respects, I'm, I'm kind of like continuing history of the pen and ink art form in this medium that's extremely current today. What I'm using right now is a brush, and that, that's how I usually block in the, all the large black areas. Uh, but I also use uh, what are called crow quill pens or, or regular quill pens where you dip them into the inkwell. So the inker literally goes with pen and ink or brush and ink right over the pencil drawings. It covers up completely the, the pencils and then erases the page when they're all done. And that makes the black and white line work very easy to reproduce. I am a very accomplished artist in my own right. I know how to pencil. I actually know how to paint as well. So I understand uh, how to correct anatomy. I add depth, I add shadows, I add textures. A anything to make the work better, uh, that's my job. My job is to improve the artwork. This is the finished black and white illustration, which after this point, it gets scanned into the computer and then colored on the computer. You, and usually the coloring is actually done at about half size, which is the printed size. People ask me, like with the new Spider-Man movie, it's like, oh, do they still need to publish the comics? And I laugh at that because Hollywood is always going to comics for proven ideas that have already reached a market and they know work. Uh, one of the best things about comics is they're still relatively cheap to produce and get a concept out there and it's like a test market. And you can see everywhere you look nowadays, comic book characters are just all over the place, but it always has to start with a comic book.